Hello and welcome to another episode of Theories and Thoughts Podcast with your hostess Anya and Fancy. Today we have the founders of From Bay to Bride. We're so excited for you guys to meet them. So stay tuned. Did that cut off too too fast? No. Hmm. Okay. Well, um, I don't know. I'm annoyed by my internet. My internet wasn't working this morning. I call. I hit them up this afternoon on chat, and it's like limited. So I can go online, but it's certain things I can do online, and I can't do nothing on my phone and. I don't have cable in the sense of cable. I have internet and Wi-Fi is with Spectrum. So I have the the cable where I can use the app or whatever without the boxes and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm like extra annoyed. But anyway, so how was your weekend? You had a lot. You had a busy weekend this weekend. Uh, I really did because um, it was really good because Dylan moved into her college apartment. This is her first apartment. She is a freshman. Um, the school had, they say this is the biggest um, class that they've had. So they actually ran out of dorms. So that's why she is a freshman as a, with an apartment. But because um, I know a lot of people probably be wanting to break me and say dorm. And I'm like, no, that's not what it is. So it was actually really cool. Um, it was extremely hot and tiresome. Um, those people that, like, I had made a post on my Facebook asking for, you know, like, some tips or suggestions as far as, like, uh, what to do or whatever. Just anything pertaining to college, you know, as a, as a freshman. And one person had suggested that I bring a dolly or a um, wagon. And I'm so glad that they suggested that because I just went on ahead and bought a dolly. Like, I thought my friend was going to have one. I had to buy one. But then um, they also offered the kids some wagons, but it like it was it was it was like they put a lot into the day and putting it together. I mean, you have to go through a whole maze just to make it up to the school, um, you know, to then make it to the apartment and everything. So it was like, uh, you know, but at the same time, it was a lot of work. Um, it, it like. When the room was so small at the same time, even though it was cool, but it was kind of small. So it was like um, when we could barely move around in it. But I shared a real about it, just kind of showing y'all. And in the in the end, the big picture that's up on the wall keeps falling down. So the real, like you can't really see. Um, it's it's short as far as like where it's going, the end result of what we actually did. But yeah, so I'm like, I'm kind of free in a lot of ways, um, although I am expecting my other daughter, hopefully she'll be moving back in with me next month sometime or like in October. Um, but it's kind of like 
excuse me, I keep on thinking, oh, I got to go pick Dylan up from work. Like every night, that's what I be thinking, right? And then it's like, oh, she's at her apartment, you know? So it's weird. But, and I wrote her like a little letter, kind of about life and, you know, like stuff, I guess, kind of take up way to college. Cause I, we never really had one of those talks. I really wasn't certain about the school, but I was just like, I'm just gonna write from the heart. And then she was like, you know, um, her lashes were wet from crying or whatever. And then she appreciated everything and so on. So, yeah, that's kind of how my week you know I'm the person that always say that I don't do anything and Lord knows I did a lot <laughs> this weekend so um, Wednesday I had my last behind the mic class which is um, being a producer you know producing a show and just different tidbits um, from Fishbow I got a certificate in everything M -M. Um, next week I will start, I wanted to take a week off next week. I will start my, um, what is it? Um, voiceover is voiceover and, um, audio book classes. And that's going to run for 12 weeks. How, if you don't mind, my, <coughs> excuse me, if you don't mind my asking, how are you finding these classes? Like, do you just search for them? No. Okay. So. You know that Suzanne, Suzanne that was on here, I'm her producer of her show. The station that she's on, Fishbow, the lady offers the classes. Oh, okay, cool. So she teach them, and I have a, I have knowledge. Well, you know, I knew knowledge of doing this, producing, because we've been doing this, what, three years now. We're in our third season. Yeah. Um, and I, um, I knew that. But I got some other little tidbits from her. She was even saying that we, you know, I could partner with her and possibly even teach that class, the behind the mic class, you know. So that'll be another income, um, you know, whenever she needs spot, spots or whatever. Um, what I was about to say, the audio, the audio um, book and voiceover. I wanted to do um, voiceover. I already do pretty much voiceover on some of my stuff, but I want to, I'm a person, I can learn this shit on my own because that's what I've done with my business and stuff. Yeah. But it's good to have that professional background. Like, you know what? I took a class in this, you know, and it's, it's really investing in myself. Yeah. So I'm excited about that. And then um, after I finish these 12 weeks, I'm going to start another 12 week class in learning how to be a producer, producer, engineer. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, I want to do that because, well, first of all, I want to do voiceover because, you know, that's a business. Um, audiobooks, you know, you and I have talked about that, putting together something. Um, so, yeah, I'll be on the lookout for that. Um, producing. I have a client who's actually going to record a poetry album. Yeah. And I want to, even though I might not be back there doing the, doing the production, I want to have enough knowledge to know what is right and what's wrong and fix anything that needs to be done. You know, it's yeah. kind of like somebody else can be doing it, but if I have that work and knowledge. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Um, Wednesday, I celebrated a birthday, my, my girlfriend's birthday. Thursday, no, Thursday, I'm sorry. Thursday, I celebrated her birthday. When, um, Friday, I went to this cute little spot out here. It's called um, but, um, Bottles and Bond. I think you will love it. When you come back, you got to go like, we got to put on some cute clothes and go. It's like really sexy in there. Really good, cute vibe. Met some guys. You know, I'm single. So. <laughs> um Saturday, I went to an industry pool party, the film industry. Um, here, Shay, this girl Shay, she put that on. And Sunday, I had an audition for a play. And um, there's a group here. It's called Melanated Socialites of, of Dallas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't really be doing groups. But they had a um, movie theme party. And I did... Um, if y'all, if any of y'all on my social media, I did, um, ooh, Jill Scott in, um, oh, that's what that was. Yeah. When I said, when I said, um, I'm going up this mountain to, um, to save my marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I was Jill. That's why I had that, 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 um, that wig looking crazy and everything. So. Yeah, that's what I did. This I mean, week. I'm like, I actually thought, you know, that it was 
I was like, oh, she made that cute. You know, I didn't realize that. <laughs> Yeah, and I wish I'm like I might have to go on their page and screenshot um screen record the video because all of them they all did a good job. So it was really, really, really good. So yes. Um that's what I did this weekend. I'm looking to hear back about the play. I did I did audition for the lead. Mm-hmm. That's when you're doing stuff that you ain't got no business doing. Why I'm you... trying to correct something I was supposed to be doing, but okay. My bad. <laughs> but you auditioned me. Yeah, you auditioned and what now? I auditioned for the lead. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Um, have y'all started on the other on the movie? They started filming already, but my part was supposed to film this week. It was actually supposed to film Sunday, but they pushed it out to the 28th. Oh, okay. Well, that's not long. Nah. Hi, Doc. I, I'm sorry. I just. I go ahead. Okay. Just saying hello. Hey, <laughs> y'all. What's the subject? We're talking walking into um, femininity at 720. Yeah. So before our guests come on, this caught my attention. So. I just happened to be scrolling Facebook <laughs> as I do. And I came across this guy and he was basically saying that women are monarchs. Were you able to put the video here? No, you didn't remember me. I, I have the question because I was like, oh, we didn't do a TAT question, but I did not put the video here. No, I'm sorry. Okay. So here's the question. The question, uh, the reason I thought it's question of the week is, are women the monarchs of their family? So it made me think about when my grandma, so my grandmother just passed and it was two of them left, her and her brother, and everybody was calling her the monarch. Well, yeah, she's the monarch because the man will be the patriarch, right? Yeah. Okay. So black women being monarchs, and but in this video on TikTok, the guy was saying, I can put it on our, um, I put it in our stories later. I put it in our um, story. So if you're on IG, on our IG, get there. If you don't, that's it. That's all. Um, he was basically saying how women are handling business and how at one point he was like, this woman is out here. She's the breadwinner. She's taking care of business. And you want to put your foot on her, basically. That's what he said. He's like, so you can feel like a man. You, you want to just put your foot on her. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do that. And just because you feel like you're the man and you're the head of the household. And I thought that was very interesting coming from a man because a lot of men don't think like that. A lot of men are quick to be like, mm -mm, you have to be submissive in this, that, and third. But here's the thing. And this actually a conversation that we had Friday at the um, restaurant that I told you about. We were talking and it was like, I don't, it comes, submission comes easy when you have a man in front of you who's actually being that. But they have so many people who don't even know what submission is, but they're always screaming submission. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, I mean, but that's not the video. You haven't actually gotten to the video part, right? Yeah, this is the video. Wait, oh, you know what? I was more so interested in, like, I got that part from the video, but I was really looking at the fact, that's why for a minute I was like, wait, he did say that toward the end. I was listening to him talking about the banking aspect of things, and that's what I was oh. trying to pick up earlier, um, the stats of Black women in, in banks, well, in the banking industry, but um, the stats I had ended up being wrong, so I'm glad I did not end up calling it out to y'all. That's what I was looking at at the very end. But I, I, um, the what was I think in in some ways we are, um, although a lot of people may not like to hear that response, but because so many of us do for you know, like we're oftentimes, um, I hate to use the term in this instance, but like we're the ones that's taking care of everybody, you know, so. Um, in that situation, when you look at how many women there probably are doing that alone, that kind of makes me think, yeah, we are. But those those are just my thoughts on the matter. Yeah, and back and to what you were saying in banking, what what he stated in the in the um in there was that black women have more degrees than black men. 
and we're in the more professional fields than black men. So if we wanted to and we took and he said banking and investing, I actually work for a bank. And so they were basically saying if you take all the black women out of the banks and we start our own stuff, we're going to make it run because we have the knowledge. We have the knowledge. We know we have the know how we have the skill. We have the degrees. But that does not say that we don't need a man it just basically says that we're more educated and nothing's wrong with that if you're not insecure well i'm just gonna say this really quickly because like what i took from that at one point i was seriously wondering what he meant by when he it sounds like to me he said when they if we were to uh exit all our money or something like that and so from that for a minute i almost thought is he saying that all the black women will lose their jobs but then i was just kind of wondering what's he saying that um about like coming together and creating a bank because at some point it just kind of made me question i don't know it made me question something i just totally lost my train of thought i think it's because i'm watching the time because i guess have arrived and i, <laughs> and I don't want to go over so i'm gonna go ahead on and go into our commercial uh, from our sponsor this evening and then we'll be back on with our guests both of y'all uh -uh. let's see uh, yeah is it possible for him to just log in on another device um yeah sure yeah that's fine okay because the screen is um, you know we did already be three of us here so okay that's cool and well got, hi angel hey, and, and welcome to theories and thoughts back what you was about to say um thanks oh i was asking does, does he have the link angel he does Okay. From the, um, email. okay. All righty. Well, thank you for joining us, Angel and Brent, on um, of the bait, huh? I said thank you for having us. Oh, you're welcome. Um, from the bait to bride society, am I correct? Mm -hmm. That's right. So, why Brent is logging in? Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and about your business? Okay, so uh, Brent and I are master relationship coaches. Uh, we teach dating strategies to high achieving single Christian women um, who find themselves in a place where they have attained all the success that you were talking about previously, but they don't have someone that they want someone to share it with, but they don't want to play the games. They don't want to... Um, waste any more time. And so they come to us, we walk them hand, hand in hand through our dating strategies um, and we help them to go from beta bride. We are currently at 35 engaged, 23 married, 24 will be married next month. Oh, wow. Look, I just, um, Angel's my pod mate. And I'm like, Angel, I've never... We've never discussed like, you know, we talk about the the behind the scenes stuff, but we never talk about like the results of all the stuff that you're doing. So that's really cool. Thank you. So, Angel, what made you say this is what we want to do? Like, why, why did y'all? I mean, because you could have kept that knowledge to yourself and say, you know what? We over here because one thing I've learned in these streets, in these dating streets and having, um, people um who love me you know talk to me about relationships they're like it's not easy so what makes you makes you say you know what although it's not easy although we're gonna get through this i'm gonna we're gonna go on here and we're gonna make things you know we're gonna talk help other people actually it it actually it found us <laughs> we um we're doing marriage and relationship uh, ministry in our church for years people, we found ourselves in a place and Brent and I have been together since high school. Um, so we found ourselves in a place where people were constantly coming to us for relationship advice. 
And so um, with that, uh, we started doing marriage and uh, doing the live streams for married people and the single women just started gravitating to us and they would overtake the uh, the broadcast with their questions. And so we kind of split between the two. Um, and so that is it. This is, um, we feel that it's purpose. It is purpose and it's definitely um, needed. I wish I had a, a beta bride society. It wouldn't, we wouldn't have shot for 10 years, but that's another story. <laughs> is, he, um, is he able to get on? He is, he's trying to get on now. Um, okay. Is it okay for me to go on a mobile device? Yeah. Yes, I'm on a mobile device. Um, is it okay for me to have a, a earpiece in? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. good. But he might can't sit there. Well, if he's, it doesn't matter if he got an earpiece in, right? If he's sitting close to her or not. Or is it yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's okay, well, I'm about to bring him in. Again. All right. Hey. All right. We good, right? Oh, uh, it is an echo. A little bit of feedback. It's a little bit of feedback. What I'll do is. Um, and I can't see him. Can't see him. So can y'all? Uh, can well, he, well he, you froze up for a minute. There it is. Can Can you hear me? Yes. Now. Is it better now? Mm hmm Okay, no feedback? No, no. feedback. Angel? No. Okay, cool. But I cool. can't find the live stream now. We can see you. Okay. I'll just talk. I can't see y'all though. All right, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> um, now, Faisy, you was about to say something? Uh, I have totally forgot, but... um. <laughs> Brent, did you want to, you know, like do a little intro as far as like uh, Angel has kind of shared what you all do, but you know, um, you kind of went out for a second. But do you want to share who you are, you know, just within the mix of things? Oh, uh, well, I'm just here so I won't get fined. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Um, me, me and Angel, uh, you know, let's see what happens. Uh, me and Angel, we've been together since the age of 15. Oh, is he freezing up? Did he freeze up? Yeah. You're frozen. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> quick quick synopsis. Me and Angel, we've been together since we were 15. Uh, we've been together for 34 years, married for 21. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of peaks and valleys. Um, I was incarcerated for four years. Uh, during the whole time, we were still in a relationship. Um, we have three beautiful kids. Uh, you know, when Angel, she did not only that, she did 29 years in the armed forces. Um, so we we both have a stint of being uh, single parents. So um, even with us having a sense of being single parents, um, from me being incarcerated, from her being the boy. So yes, that's, you know, pretty much that's that's who we are. Um, we are super excited about the 35 young ladies that we've helped to, to get engaged. Um, you know, and when when we go into to the, the, the uh, you know, walking your feminine grace, um, this is how I knew that Angel was the one. Um, you know, because when I came home, she was she was saved, sanctified, and I'm like, yo, you you come, you gonna give the kids up? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? He's like, nah, we're not doing that no more. So that was a whole nother thing um, that we overcame as we talk about values. Um, you know, that's we, we, we've seen some peaks of value. So that's about it. Okay. Yeah, I had to grab my phone. So if it looks weird, I had to grab my phone. The phone is overheating now. The devil oh. is busy, but it's all right. We're going to move. <laughs> that's why I have it in my head. So if it looks wobbly or whatever while I'm talking, you know, that's why. So, Bates of Bride Movement, do you guys have another counterpart for the men? Because I find that we're always talking to the women. we always telling women how to be feminine, how to walk in their femininity. But are we telling these men to walk in their masculinity? Because it's a lot of us out here 
um, <laughs> who's walking in our femininity. We 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 are moving forward, but there's not enough men that want to take on that role. They want to talk about um, submission, and they don't know nothing about it. So, here's oh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, the men that we work well that Brent works with, and he does work with uh, his mentees. Uh, men don't generally come out publicly to, to get the help that they need. So there's no need for us to look for them to do that. Uh, but the thing that we teach our women is to focus on, we're not sitting around waiting to be found by nobody. We're not sitting around waiting for nobody, right? We are working on improving ourselves, becoming the best versions of ourselves that we can be. And what we have found is when our women shift their focus and uh, make their focus becoming that best version of themselves, they tend to change the type of man that they're attracting. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. About, uh, the, the submission piece. Submission is for marriage. The, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, your baby. You're working. That's my grandchild. Sorry. That's my grandchild. Okay, girl. You don't look on the palace. He just ran right in the office. Hey, y'all. <laughs> uh, you know, we teach our ladies that submission is definitely for marriage. And so as you are in the information uh, phase of dating or courting or however you want to term it, um, you want to make sure that this is the time that you find out if he is submission worthy or if he himself is submitted. Right. Um, there's a definite hierarchy for the family laid out in scripture, but it starts with God and then the man. So if he's not submitted to anything, um, then there is absolutely nothing for, for a woman to submit to. And so um, that's that's our stance. That's our take on. That's our take on submission. You good. I, you hear something? Okay, yeah, there was a bit of feedback on, over here. And so that's our take on submission. Um, and, but what I found is if you do the investigative stage properly, if you get, make sure that you have uh, submitted yourself or connected yourself with the right person, submission becomes easy, right? Because submission in and of itself doesn't mean that I'm a doormat, that I'm uh, laying down and being a, taken advantage of. What submission means is that I make a conscious decision to take all of my wonder, all of my power, all of my glory, all of my badness, and put it up under all of his power, all of his glory, all of his badness, so that he can then lead our family into our personal destiny. Definitely. I totally agree. Um, actually she's, she's saying something. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I was just, I was just saying that um I agree and that you said something like you pretty much confirmed what I was saying. I told someone the other day, I was like, I'm working on me to be the best version of me. So when he gets here, I'm prepared. I'm ready. Yes. Like, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah my, all my technology is doing something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, um, I would like to dive into the investigative stage that you mentioned, Angel, because I think that, and, and Brent, I hope we got some questions for you, too, but I'm just like, because you just said something I wasn't even totally expecting, and I'm just like, okay, I don't think I'm really good at this. So I'm curious, as a single woman, like, what are some things that we should be asking? Because I even started, like, Googling questions not too long ago, just like, let me just see what type of things should I be asking of someone, because I'm one of those people that think I could just read people, and I oftentimes be wrong. So... So when it comes to your investigative phase, and Lord, this is going to take me away. So it comes with the foundational thing. And this is something that I share with one of our mentees uh, just the other day. Before you can talk about or go out and do any investigation for what you're looking for, you yourself first have to know what it is you're looking for. And so it comes with you setting up what are your non-negotiables? What are your relationship boundaries? What are your relationship standards? What is it that, what is your vision for relationship? 
And so once you have a clear picture of what it is that you desire and get a clear understanding of the type of relationship that you absolutely deserve to have, then you can go out and, and, and have these series of conversations. And it doesn't even, and I shared with her, it doesn't even have to be like you're interrogating him under the bright light. What's your social security number? What's your this? What's your that? It's making, bringing those things that are important to you into the conversation. Um, it, it could be something as simple as uh, the, you, you have kids. What's his take on kids? It could be something as simple as, you know what, I, I was just, what did you do this weekend? He asked you that. Oh, I took my kids out to blah, blah, blah. And we did this. We did that. I just, I absolutely enjoy spending time with them. And then be quiet. And let him talk. Okay. Now it's his time to talk. And you get a clear picture of, does he, is he flustered around kids? Does he have a, a, an affinity for kids? What is it that he says? Because it's important. You've already shared what's important to you. Right. And I'm, and if you have kids, that's going to be a non-negotiable. And so you and bring that into the conversation and this be quiet. And be and here's the thing. Get comfortable in the silence. We oftentimes feel like when we're in conversation with, with uh, especially with the gentleman, we don't have to lead the conversation. That, that's cumbersome, that's tiring and exhausted. So you say what you have to say and then be quiet. Two seconds, he hasn't said anything. We're going to wait two more. Let him lead the conversation. Let him share his thoughts. Okay. So that's um, a part of the investigation. Of course, you want to know, and in those conversations, just being comfortable in the silence and allowing him to speak um, and talk about himself gives you a clear understanding. Is he worthy of a second day? Like, is he aligned? Is is he, are his values in harmony with mine? These are the things that you you find out by talking and allowing him to talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we want to go back to Brent. I know Brent has something that he wanted to say. Brent, I'm sorry, we didn't, you know, when girls start talking. No, sorry about that. Uh, he on mute, though. <laughs> You're on mute. Oh, okay. Let me okay. mute. Okay. Okay. That's, That's fine. Y'all you know, walking y'all feminine grace. You know what I'm saying? Um, no, nah, I just I just wanted I just wanted to share uh okay, you know think. what what we're what we're looking for. Um, you know, what we seek, you know, and we, we always talk about the table, you know, the significance, the significance of the table is really like, um, if a man asks a woman what he brings to the table, you need to reconsider him because real <laughs> commitment ready men is not going to ask you what, what you bring to the table because we already know because what we're looking for and we already have the table. And what you bring is the elegance. What you bring is the significance of house having the table. Because if you go into uh, a bachelor pad, uh, any table is a card table or table for dominoes. But if you are coming together with a woman, we're glad that you even come to the table. Because we know that you're going to prepare that table for us. Not only prepare that table for us, you're going to make it in some type of significance. You know, the, the thing about sometimes you have to operate in your mask. Is he, is it? He's frozen. Okay. Angel, you can unmute. Oh, I had him. That's, That's all I wanted one. to say as, as it talks about the, the feminine power, fem, about femininity. I, I like what you just said about the table because what I find in these in these streets, I'm 41 now and um, never been married and I don't have any children. Mm -hmm. And what I find I had to learn for myself is that, you know, stop. Oh, um, he's trying. No, I'm 41. No. If you look, if you're not doing something I look right now, and you're going to have um, another thing was 
when people had that conversation about what I'm bringing to the table and all these different things, I I know that's not my that's not the man that I want because I want to be taken care of. I don't care how many businesses I got. I don't care how much things I do. I don't care how much money I make because to me, taking care of me is more than just money. You know, it's, it's, it's more than that. For me, I need somebody that I could just lay in and lay on. But do you find a lot of women, especially when they get to this age, you know, over 35, they they seem to just take whatever. Do, do you find that to be the case because they're tired of being by themselves? Absolutely. We see that. And, and you get you you just um, confirmed the conversation that Brent and I had. Um, earlier today, we were talking about uh, bringing, uh, what do you bring to the table? And he was talking about how for a man, uh, the woman brings the significance. I said, absolutely, because we as women, we're looking for someone who is going, you bring the food to the table. I'm going to give you a meal. You know, you bring uh, substance. And when you talk about feeling loved and, and safe, and, and provided for and protected. Those are the things that, that we see as love, right? Uh, men want respect, they want honor. Um, and that's how they uh, receive love. But you're absolutely right. There are some women who will um, settle for less. They know, going in, they know that he is not, he, he not it. But because they feel that that proverbial clock is ticking, um, they will settle for less. They, they settle. And so, um, and it's sad. And it, the, they settle because of exhaustion. Right. They, and they settle because they don't know how to walk in their feminine power. We have in our community ladies who, who reach out to us and ask, what does that mean? What does that even look like? I don't even know what that looks like. No one ever taught me that I had feminine power to walk in. Right. So once you learn um, the power of your femininity, the power of your feminine essence, and you awaken that feminine power and you're able to walk in it um, unabashedly, you you ain't settling for that. Because you know what you're worthy of. Um, Brent talks all the time with our ladies about the difference of knowing your worth and knowing that you're worthy, right? You can put a, a you can put a price on worth. You can put a dollar value on the worth of something. But worthiness, that's infinite, baby. And, and I don't have time to play with that because I know I don't have to do anything. I don't have to perform for you to be worthy. I step in and I'm worthy. Now, now, mm -hmm. are you worthy enough? For this, for this greatness and this glory that I bring. Right. What is what? What is walking in your feminine? What does that look like? It looks like a woman who is confident and comfortable in her own skin, who knows her worthy, knows that she is worthy. She knows the value that she brings to a relationship. She is able to walk in a place of flow and not from a place of fear. She has done the self work that uh, has healed her from the scars and the fears that she might have brought from her past. Uh, she's a healed and a whole woman who, who can walk in any room with her head up knowing that I bring the goods. That, that's in a nutshell. <laughs> you don't have to okay. Right, right. You, you know, just be, right? I don't have to prove anything to you. I don't have to compare myself to her. I just show up and I am who I am. Yeah. You just go ahead and all. I am who I am. So I'm listening to Angel and I'm still sitting here thinking, um, Angel, we, I went through a whole, oh, I'm about to break up with my boyfriend thing in Atlanta and you did not, you know, I never would have just um, you didn't realize I was going through that? Okay. Well, <laughs> we were at the um, at Epic Woman. You know, well, mm -hmm. Naja and I had discussed this, so I'm just like, I should have been talking to you. you I should have been talking to you. I had no idea. Like, I'm sitting here, like, even still, I came back, but just as you were talking about, like, um, when I came back to, um, to Baton Rouge, I was like, oh, I'm going to try to give it another try. 
but as I listened to you talk about settling earlier, I, um, it reminded me so much of my own situation. Like I almost settled, you know, like I really, that hit home for me on a deeper level, I think. So I'm just, I'm shocked, but I'm also, you know, I'm just learning so much because for me, I don't know. I, I'm not going to say like I read books about dating and I'm still, I feel like I'm a work in progress. But so much of what you said earlier as well, even when you were discussing that about the um, the investigation, I was kind of like, you know what? I began to do those sort of things. Like I didn't know to do those things, but just something was kind of telling me like, hey, you know what? Maybe let him um lead the conversation a little you know or because i'm not even a talkative person and it does get to be tired so i've been sitting here saying to myself like you know okay is he gonna kick in and then even when you said that about like wait two more seconds because that's how i be okay and i'm like you know what well now we're at 15 minutes but if he want to talk then you know he's gonna have to say something to me <laughs> just like i'm getting those little things but it it has taken me i mean i'm 37 now and i'm like i feel i feel kind of behind it you know so just um, also, I just want to also acknowledge um, Ms. Sugar Marie because she has been over here just really like, you better tell me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hearing him, and I'm ready to upgrade our table. That's when you were talking, Brent. That's what she's talking about. She said she's 48, separated 24 years, seven children and two grandchildren. And she's saying, I'm learning about my feminine power, knowing my thoughts, feelings, and my choice matters. So absolutely, was, you know, really absolutely, absolutely. That's what I keep doing when you guys see my fingers. When you guys see my fingers do this, I'm looking at the comments because <laughs> I have to switch it over. <laughs> but um, real quick, something that I started doing when I really, 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 because like you said, Angel, we're not taught that. We're taught, take care of yourself. You don't need no man for nothing. You're going to do this and that third. So for me, when I really started you know, saying I want to be married and really doing the work. You know what I started doing on our first date? I wear a dress. I wear a dress on our first date. I put on some. Look, I do it up. And you I remember this. Smelling like something. Listen, this guy was like, "You don't have to wear no heels." I was like, "Oh yes, baby. Look, I'm. I have to do it up. I, I have to because putting on a dress." And some makeup and some good smelling perfume and all that. That makes me feel like a woman. Yeah. Like, I feel so, whew, you know? And so that's something that I started doing because I was mindful of it and I'm so intentional about it. Yes. You know, I was talking to this guy Friday and um, I said, so now you got to take me out. He was like, okay, as long as I can pick the restaurant. I said, well, as long as I can pick the dress. And we laughed, but I was serious. Right. <laughs> I, don't know, I always wear dresses, so I don't know. I'm just like, I mean, this is kind of new to me because I just always thought that was the thing to do. Um, that's but that's just kind of me. I wear dresses for most events too, so I don't know. I don't. <laughs> yeah, but that real quick on that. Mm -hmm. the, the, the power, the core of who you are is that femininity. I don't care what you went through, I don't care the residue of the last relationships, that's just who you are. And when you walk in that, you begin to attract relationship relationship ready men. Um, and, and I say so. One of the things that we're able to help and to get young ladies in harmony with and alignment in their lives is giving them hope. Because we, when we tell our story, uh, you think about what we went through as a couple, um, as as a married couple. One of the things that we went through is a lot of heartache that was caused by us. But if you would begin to just pay attention to what God says about you, think about what God says, how he explains, how he explains, you know, in first Corinthians, he talks about uh, the woman being the glory of the man. Uh, in Proverbs 18 to 22, he said, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. He who finds a good thing and obtains favor. He talks about this. He said, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Every time, and, and, and he went through all of his creation. And one of the things that he said about Adam before he created, created you beautiful young ladies was this. He said, it is not good for man to be alone. Everything that he made was good. But when he made woman, he outdid everything. And every time God explains you, you know, you have to know that you're, you're the glory. When we talk about uh, worth and worthy, 
you can put on work. But when you're worthy, that's that's priceless. That's priceless. You know, you begin to put like like uh, I think baby said put some respect on put some respect on that. Y'all, y'all can get men to put the respect that y'all deserve on that. And listen, and this is what we talk about when we talk about being husbands. This is what we want. Men are seeking for the one, not the ones and twos. The ones and twos come and go. But the one in who God has set out for us, just pay attention how God explains who you are to, to the world and to civilization. I just want to say that. that was good. Yeah. Well, also, um, before we just acknowledge these things, and then Angel, I want to ask y'all about something. Well, both of you all. Um, Okay, I'm sorry. Sugar Marie said, I used to be in the head of household for 31 years now. And then Anitra Robinson said, my mom personally never told me how to take care of a man. I watched her ways and how she did things with and for my dad. I, I took certain things from her and made it my own. Um, Sugar Marie said, I didn't want to be viewed as a pushover. And I was taught to take care of everyone except for me. Oh, one last comment. I decided a year ago that I was worthy of being loyal to myself and not cheating because he cheated. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And she's not alone. That's the that that's what we find so often from our women is that no one taught us. We were taught to be strong. We were taught to be independent. We were taught to be the go-getters. We were taught all of these things. And none of that was really God's intention for us, right? And if we honest about it, it's exhausting. We tired of being a strong black woman. Listen, right? I'm not we, a strong black woman. We ready to be the princess. We ready to be that queen. We ready to, we ready to sit down and have a seat somewhere, right? And so um, we have to know that we are worthy. And I love that the young lady said that she, she just learn by watching her mom right and it's great but for me i didn't have that right i was raised by a single parent so i didn't have my mama i wasn't able to watch her taking care of me and nobody taught me with you know who i learned from i learned from brent's mom mm. because his parents were married for 60 64 years Right. And so, and like I said, we've been together since high school. So I was able to look at their interactions and kind of get a glimpse of what true godly marriage looked like and, and had something to aspire to. Right. And uh, my husband, he learned what it was to be a husband by watching his dad. But, and that's great. But for those of us who don't have that, that's what that's where we are. That's what we're doing with the young ladies is teaching them how to care for themselves um, and how to position themselves to be not just a bride, but a wife. That means that I know who I am. Um, I, I'm walking in my femininity. I am whole. By my, I'm complete by myself. I'm not looking for anyone to make me happy. I'm looking for for someone who can um, add to my happiness and make me happier and bring joy to my life, right? Um, and who I can do the same thing for. And 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 that we can't skip, we can't overlook that, right? Because just like we have our list of expectations, we need we have to make sure that we are meeting up to those expectations. We have to be what it is we're looking for. Why? Because he got expectations too. Mm -hmm. He want more than your lips, hips, and feet. He gonna take them if you give it to him. But he looking for more than that. And so if you are laying all of that out, but you're not checking the 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 box of all of those expectations that you have for your that you yourself have, don't wonder why he he'll play with you and then marry the next girl. Oh. Why? Because she's challenged him. She showed him something that made him want to be more like Brent, Brent uh, talked about earlier when he came home from prison he left I was his girlfriend I was his baby mama right we we had our son together while we were in college um 
for four years. I, I didn't, I took that four years and I learned who I was right? Yes, I gave my life to Christ and I learned who I was. I learned that I was fearfully and wonderfully made. But then my heart learned it, right? Because that's the next uh, part of the scripture. My heart knows it quite well. And so when my heart knew it, mm -mm, I ain't settling for, no, you can't live here. Your clothes gonna be in this little closet in the hallway. You can pick up your boxes when you come, but you can't live here no more. Why? Because I know now that I'm worth more than that. I know that I deserve more than that. And this is the path that I'm walking. I know what I want and I know where I'm going. You are more than welcome. She was tripping right now. No. <laughs> no, she was right. She was right. And, and so we have to know, we have to know that we know that we know that we are worth more than 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 the bottom of the barrel. When we know it, we show up differently. And, we do. And, and uh, we begin to attract differently when we show up differently. It, it all starts in mindset. It all starts with our mindset. Can, can I share one thing? Yeah. Yeah. Y'all can go ahead. I mean, I, I, I'm okay. I, I, I can... That now we're saying, yeah, we're waiting for you to share. Okay. One of the things that when Angel said it was about position, where was she, where she was positioned in her life? Uh, we talk about harmony and alignment all the time. This is what we help our young ladies with. Um, and with her, she because she walked in her feminine grace, I, I don't want to deviate from what we're talking about. Because she walked in her, her feminine grace, one of the things that it attracted out of me was a husband. I knew I wanted to be to be a husband, but I didn't know what I was looking for. So I went back to who I thought where she was. But during that time, I was only attracting a girlfriend or a baby mama. She had all she she changed she changes she changed address. But as I began to look, I said, I know I want to be a husband. I want to be better than what I am. You know. And I began to go back to the same location she was, and she was just blocking me. I said, "Hold on, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta." Don't make it sound like that. Don't make it I, I sound like that. I gotta recalibrate this thing. But I recalibrated, and I found her, and it attracted the best out of me. Listen, I'm telling y'all, you're not if 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 he can't if he's not up for the challenge, be okay with lo with, with losing him. You ain't losing nothing. Because you ain't losing nothing, except for more heartache. For me, I knew I'm a go-getter. I'm a man. You understand what I'm saying? I knew what I wanted. And I had to get myself together. And once I, so I saw where she was, she began to track the best out of me. She didn't even try. All she did is walk. All she did is be. Because the Bible, when the Bible talks about it, and I go back to that, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains its favor. This how this is how God explains to the world who you are. And I want and I and I say it again, and I'm gonna keep on saying it because know how God explains to the world who you are. You know, I go even even you being the glory. And, and if y'all want to look at look at the verses, is uh first Corinthians. Uh, the 11th chapter, verses 7 through 10. This is who God, God has made you authority. Mm -hmm. And you're walking like as if you're not important. And you are so important. And you being important, you talked about something about being a monarch. You know, this is your royalty. Yes. This is who God has called you to be. You, you, you're royalty. And everything that we do, we, we teach it with, with biblical scripture because this is, you know, a young lady asked us last night on TikTok. She said, because I don't believe in God, uh, am I not going to get a, a, a mate? I said, no. I said, this is what I need you to understand. Um, marriage is not a contract. It's a covenant. It's covenant. It's covenant. With God. And God honors you because you're the creation and once you understand what that is and how it looks you can attract your mr right way. 
So, and that's why I won't put in your family groups. Right, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. That was good. That was yeah. good. I think well, you I had um, yeah, I wanted to ask before we wrapped up. I know Angel, um, and I keep saying Angel, but both of you all, I'm just so I'm more familiar with Angel, of course, but um, that you all have a big project that you're working on. I wasn't certain if you had, if you know, have you all talked publicly about it or, um, what, you know, from yeah. the our retreat? Uh -huh. I, yeah. I didn't want to mention it. You know, okay, I, I wanted to make certain that you all got an opportunity to tell them a little bit about it if you had spoken about it publicly. So, so you can Absolutely. tell us. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so, Bernard, we're hosting a Galentine's Day retreat in uh, Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, February 13th through the 17th. Um, and it's called the Feminine Awakening Experience because we've encountered so many women who don't know what it means to walk in their feminine power. They don't know what that looks like. So we're going to um, get together in the in in the Dominican Republic in the DR um we're not worrying about who gonna buy me no flowers we not we're not gonna worry about waking up full of dread and you know by sending ourselves flowers to the office we're not doing any of that we're going to really go ahead and position ourselves so that we can learn what it means to be that feminine um woman who is confident in her own skin um, I, we're excited about it. Again, it's February the 13th through the 17th. It's the Feminine Awakening Experience in the DR. Um, and if anyone listening is interested, they can go to uh, b to b be the number 2 b retreatfun Wait, let me, um, I was trying to create another, I thought it was going to be the Bay to Bride site, but you said B, the number 2 B. Mm -hmm. B, B to B retreat dot F U N. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. That's it. Is it it's yeah, not it's showing. It was showing. Do it again. It's, oh, showing. Yeah, it's showing. Okay. It's not scrolling, but okay. So y'all can no. see that website address right it there. All, All right, you guys. Okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. Is there anything that we did not cover that you want to make sure that we cover tonight? I enjoyed you, young lady. Yeah, it was uh, fun. Um, we just want to really, um, I would like to make sure that um, to encourage women to not lose hope, right? Um, just continue to position yourself um, and not, don't settle. Don't settle. Right. Because you're worth more than that. Um, I share with the ladies on Saturday when we find ourselves settling and not knowing how to uh, use our voice and speak up and, and say what we mean, mean what we say. It, be, it gets to the place where it's exhausting and then we become resentful in the relationship. So we don't do ourselves or um, our partners any good when we settle. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I just, I and that's just a word, uh, a mouthful right there, just by itself, you know. So, so what thank you, say, Brent? Brent was saying, to reiterate, um, you know, I don't want y'all to be confused, but my role in everything that we do is there is a big miscommunication when it comes to men and women in relationship. Um, and what I do is I teach the young ladies the mind of a man. Um, why we think the way that we do. Uh, how y'all think. How we think. Uh, <laughs> if, if he says this, he really means that. And, you know, we got, like, like we said before, when we talk about the table, anytime that you go in a bachelor's uh, house, any table is like a card table. It's a gaming table. So I'm going to tell you the games that is being played on that table. All right? So this is why I think that we're able to have so much, um, you know, so much success with the young ladies. You know, we, 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 we say it all the time. We produce more brides than the bachelor. And that's literally 35 young ladies. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's no small task, but we give glory all to God. Absolutely, our ladies have a cheat code. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I tell, and I, I tell it like it is, you know. So, um, that's it. 
Okay, well, this has been very good. It's um, confirmed a lot of things that I deal with because I'm being so, oh, you think you did? You, and I'm like, no, I'm just not going to deal with certain things, you know? And um, my best friend, Anitra, <laughs> who had said something, she told me, she said, I'm not learning nobody's name unless you're dating them three months. I was <laughs> like, okay. That's her day. And, they, and that's how she is. She is like that. But I'm thankful to have people around me also who reaffirm me as well, because I think that's important, yes. you know, for a woman, because sometimes you start feeling like it's you when it's really mm -hmm. not. you. So thank you guys for joining us today. If you would like to contact Angel and Brent Rose, you can contact them at www.baytobride.com. That's for our audio listeners and on Instagram at I'm waiting for it to scroll back. <laughs> the Bay to Bride Movement. And um, I think on Facebook you have Society, am I right? Yes, the it's Bay the Beta Bride Society. The Beta Bride Society. If you are looking, you know, you you've almost you know lost hope, you need a man's opinion, contact them. Don't forget the retreat is the 13th through the 14th. No, the 13th through the 17th, February 2023. The website is B2B-R-E-T-R-E-A-T Thank you guys for joining us. And we hope to have y'all back soon. Talk some more about thank this, you, right? Thank you. All it's right. been a pleasure. It's been All a pleasure. right. Thank you guys for having us. You're welcome. Thank you. That was a good conversation. It was really good. I'm glad we had them. Remember, this is Black Business Month, and we are making sure we bring on entrepreneurs this month. Um, many of you guys may not know, but Fancy is a part of um, a group with Abriel. Is that how you say her name? Abriel Franks. Abriel Franks. And I was like, you know, we should have some of them come on and talk about their business. So, Angel is one of the ladies from her pod. They have different groups. So I'm learning about it and all. <laughs> so um, Fancy had mentioned last week, was it last week, um, that she's wearing um, a black business shirt. Mm -hmm. But I decided to do the same thing today. This is Bougie Apparel. Her IG is um, I am. Bougie, bougie is spelled B O U G I E, girl. Um, her Facebook is the same, is Bougie Girl World. Her website is www.bougieworldgirl.com. And um, you can't see that because it's small, but this is her shirt. It's a cute little logo. If you bougie, I was, I'm told that I'm um, bougie at times, but I say I'm bougietto. Um, I also have on um, the Candy Lady Chili on my lips tonight. I said, let me wear this. This is one of my first lipsticks from there. It's kind of an orange red. I remember that one. My your chili powder. Um, if you would like to contact me, www.ladycl.com. Lady is spelled with an I. Lady CL on all platforms. Um, my email is arnya at ladycl.com. Fancy. Okay, so tonight I'm uh, wearing a shirt from, uh, and it says Hood Music and Fine Dining, and I got it from Fab Fly Fancy on Instagram. Um, I think her website is also fabflyfancy.com because I just ordered straight from the Instagram. So, um, and now I'm sitting here thinking, do I have a, is this, yeah. I might have to, because I ordered my shirts, like I've been ordering them, kind of like, okay, okay, make sure you uh, order you another shirt so you have something for the next week. And now I'm kind of wondering, I thought this was the one, but maybe this isn't the one, because maybe her since it came in. But I will share, um, I'll be taking a picture and sharing the details on Instagram, so you all can check us out there. And don't forget, y'all, to follow us on Instagram and interact with us. We greatly appreciate it. This is our handle before I even go into my own handle. So it's Theories and Thoughts brand. Um, both Theories and Thoughts both have S on them, just to note that. Okay, so if you all are looking for me, you can find me. Everything is um, the Swagger Magazine related is Swag Her Magazine. And then um, all of my personal sites are Fancy Swagger. And then my link tree is Fancy Thoughts. 
I think that's everything. Oh, I am offering, um, I'm doing a cohort right now. It's called Be Seen, Be Heard. You all can check that out. It is on the Swagger Magazine shop page. But if you are in need of public relations services, my roster is a little clear right now. So I am um, pitching new clients. And I have this special that I'm doing. It's kind of like a mini campaign. So if anybody's in interested in that, then you can also visit the website, like I said. I think that's it. And that's all, folks. I'm about to call um, Spectrum and find out what is going on with my internet. It's working halfway. So anyway, I saw Seattle.